part. Let's bring in Michelle Schneider, partner and director, trading research and education at Market Gauge. Michelle, what does this uh, short squeeze look like to you? Is it over? What are some of the lessons that we can learn from this? Because it looks like so, uh, those retail traders are heading for the exits. Well, first of all, let's say that history repeats itself even though the complexion of that history may change. So this is not the first time that we've seen a market that has experienced a short squeeze. It happened 40 years ago in the commodities with silver until the regulators came in and put a stop to it. And it's happened really with Tesla through the years in that the fundamentals were awful. There were people going short that stock thinking that it was going to tank. And of course, it turned out to go just the opposite, catching so many people short along the way. So this latest phenomenon is interesting because this one really has evolved out of social media. And a bunch of kids that got together and is ballooned now to well over 9 million that realize that they can make money by doing this short squeeze on stocks that have been heavily shorted by the hedge funds. So what we've seen now in the last day is that things went back somewhat normalized, and that's not surprising either because that generally happens. But I do believe that it will bring up a lot of uh, questions about the free market and how much regulation there should be. It also, of course, brings up the question of will they be back? I believe they will. I think they're, they're not going away. I think they're on to something here and trying to fight the system, so to speak. And it also brings up that exactly what we've seen in the past. If you don't have some level of strategy, you are going to have you know, an easy come, easy go, and maybe much worse result if you don't know what you're doing. Those are some good points, Michelle. But we also see, as you mentioned, that short squeeze targeting silver. Do you think the fundamentals support the rally or the gains in the commodity? Well, I have been very bullish commodities for quite some time. I felt that the steel and copper run that we've seen throughout the year, uh, also the food prices that have increased tremendously, based on some real fundamental facts being shortage, short supply, supply chain disruption, in, t when in terms of food, some climate conditions, low labor force, hoarding because of the fact that you know, people are nervous in countries that they're not going to be able to get enough supply. This is all money supply, debt. I mean, we could go on and on. The fact that silver fundamentally had been so far behind, I thought was more interesting. Now, of course, it got a little ahead of itself. They raised the margins to 18% as a result of the rally. But I still think that where silver corrected to on Tuesday in the New York markets was actually a support area and something to be watched for another launch pad to possibly go higher. Okay, do you think tech is going to go higher? I mean, futures market pointing to further gains, but given that these big tech firms have seen lofty valuations, a lot of it might have already been priced in. Are there other areas of the market that you're looking at? Well, I totally agree with you. I, I think when you talk about tech, so we're going to talk about big tech, obviously. And we started to see a little bit what happened last week with Netflix, Apple, Facebook, all had great earnings and all have come off. Now we had Amazon with incredible earnings and Alphabet with incredible earnings. Well, Amazon after markets only up about one and a half percent and Alphabet's up about eight or nine percent, which tells me exactly what we really thought, which is they are well saturated. They may not have that much upside. Of course, they'll go up with the market, but that's not where the exciting money is to be made right now. Let's forget about the Reddit kids and all of the stocks that they're doing. Just in general, there's so much new tech out there. There's these SPACs and IPOs that are coming out. There are so many stocks that in a given day make more than what Google has just done overnight with blast off report. Okay, Michelle, do you think the stimulus package, now that there's more optimism on it from Biden's side of things, is that going to provide much of a tailwind to the markets? Is he going to be able to fast track it without Republican support? Or will he have to settle for something much smaller than he hoped for? Well, right now they're saying that if they fast track it and they get 51 votes, they can basically pass it and that Republicans can start to try to dispute it. 
but it might be sticking points because a lot of the stimulus has to do with health care and vaccine rollout. And I know the Republicans aren't going to want to look like they're trying to prevent that. So this is where you're seeing another level of the market optimism. And there's really two markets here. There's the market that's going on the macro situation in hope of stimulus. And of course, then there's the market of the short squeeze. So looking at that market right now, there's a divergence in momentum, which basically means that if you measure the velocity, uh, velocity of how far a price goes up or down, that momentum right now is showing a slowdown versus the price of the gains that we've seen right now. And that makes sense because the market is sort of at this crossroads where if the stimulus doesn't happen, the momentum is suggesting that we can see a, a market sell-off like we started to see last week. And if it does, then we can start to see the momentum catch up because I think you'll see a whole new round of buyers coming in as we've proven every time stimulus checks come through, people go in and invest in the market. Michelle, it's been great chatting with you. Thanks for weighing in on these market issues. Michelle Schneider there of Market.